fishy. <laughs> it's so different to do this with a microphone and headphones than a phone conversation. I'm so, <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. And thank you. Thanks for schlepping and thanks for being here. Okay, so we, we spoke about some topics, like what would be valuable for me to hear and for others to hear, for listeners to learn, I guess. Um, and like the first, first sort of topic of conversation that we discussed and that I would really like to dive into a little is um, religion as a whole, uh, maybe historically, and then we'll sort of, you know, bring it back here to you know, practically and day to day and how that affects or how and um, religion as a whole and Yiddishkeit specifically. Sure. So. First, let me tell you th um, uh, that I'm honored to be here, that Thank you me. feel that I can uh, contribute to your uh, audience. And uh, so um, and I'm happy uh, to have a great discussion like we always do. Thank you. We always do. I always appreciate our conversation. I think Thank this you. podcast came about that there's plenty, there's people that I've had conversation with. I'm like, it's not fair that only I hear it. Oh, okay. <laughs> and like, what, what's the purpose for me when I have like insightful conversation or teachings with people? It's for me to better my life and it's for everyone to better, right? It doesn't belong to me. So we're here to share it. Thank and you. That's what you do in general, right? Yeah. Help try, things. try to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, religious religion as a history, like, uh, like, like in a storytelling place, um, like what did it look like way back? I guess it depends which religion, but I'm um, like, really, what did what did what did it mean? Like, I guess I don't even know how far back we're talking. Is it a thousand years ago or is it two thousand years ago? Like, I know what it's like today because I live today. Like, what is it like then? So. If you want to go back to the beginning, um, there's a lot of different a lot of different stages that went, the religion went through and still going through. So right from the beginning, um, let's talk about the Jewish religion, which is the which let's call it the the, uh, you know, the the father of all of the mainstream religions, right? Mainstream uh, like Christianity and, and um, um, Islam. So. When we talk about way back, uh, we have to take into into perspective that what our our resources to know that is mm. when has it, you know, when from when is it documented mm. and how much has been documented, mm. right? So the Navi and we have Chumash, we have the Nevi'im, and then we have Ksuvim, and then we have the Gemara, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so Chumash is what we have starts much before the religion was organized, right? It starts mm -hmm. from Avraham from Avinu and going to Yitzchak and Yaakov. So, right, so those people were religious people? Were they religiously living? Was it a thing even? Were they walking around thinking, I am religious, I'm not? Right, so first of all, so, uh, on, so prior to the history of, the Jews and the Eden as a nation, which starts in Mitzra Mitzrayim and coming mm -hmm. out of Mitzrayim, we only know about the Torah focuses on Avram and his family. Mm -hmm. Although we know that it says Besanefesh Ashusibuchun that there were a lot, lot more people that were a part of mm -hmm. that network or framework, right? Mm -hmm. But we don't know much about it. I mean, mm -hmm. very little is written. We know about what was beyond just the into an immediate family, right? Right, above right. So only later when, when Am Yisrael started becoming a nation, that's when the Torah starts writing much more about real history, what's happening, what's going on, how as it right? So in the um so definitely getting to your question, which is very interesting. Um the Rambam is very clear, let's say in Marnavukham and even in in the Sefer Yad Chazaka also, but that, for example, I'm just get, I'm getting a little technical here, but tell me if it's getting too technical and if that's not the point of the question. But so let's take Bris Mila, right? Uh, Avramini, that was the first mitzvah, right? Right. Do we, do we today, when we performed the mitzvah of Bris Mila on our kids, right? 
Is that because of what Avram Avinu was told by Hashem? Mm. The Rambam says absolutely not. After it, we, the Am Yisrael is obligated to Matan Torah. Everything before Matan Torah does not cannot carry over to to the generations. So the way Avram practiced is just a it could be the same. Could be the same thing, but it's not the same. That's not why we do it. Mm. So even Shabbos, which was given before Matan Torah in Muru, we do it because we were told about Har Sinai. Mm-hmm. That's the technicality of it. But just getting back to the main overall question, um, so we don't know much other than their lives, right? Their lives we see was a very intimate life. Actually, we see very intimate with Hashem, right? In a way more than any, than we ever see again. Yeah, Avram Ravini is, is the one that our history says that uh, that Avram Vini was the first one to kind of like come um, formally and pronounce and, 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 and announce that there's only one, there's only one, uh, one God. And um, basically he was at that time, it's, a, it was a pretty rebellious uh, mm. you know, stance to take. Right. Basically he was saying, Everything else that everyone believes in, it doesn't make any sense, right? right? So he was a very anti-system. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Which yeah. is interesting to think. Yeah. While religion today is is experienced so different. Like it's so systematic religion for some. I think you touched a couple of things here you're saying, right? Mm. So first of all, religion experienced uh, is already something. If you're experiencing religion versus just the structure and the framework. Mm. So a big part of religion today, and in general in history, has very little to do with religion. It's a framework that you you know a structure that's what everyone does, and that's in Lushna Chazal, Mitzvah and Lushna Milamuda. That's how it is. You know, mm. that's just how, and it can be very cultural. Religion could be cultural right. to people, like a social habit, or y- like, and yeah. then it's a cultural, cultural habit right. and a community connection. Yeah. And what you're describing about Avraham Avinu is none of that. I'm saying, so you're, I'm just yeah. uh, I'm playing off what you're, you, the words yeah. you were using, religion, like, uh, uh, religion experience. If someone already is experiencing mm. religion, that's already something, right? right. Um, because you're experiencing, then it's, it's already something individual and real to you, right? Right. So, uh, uh, but... Uh, what, is it, what does it mean, experienced? Like... Um, when you say experienced, what do you, how do you put I mean, that into context? Meaning, and words? This, right? That that it has first that it has it has multiple le- levels, right? So first of all, that it has meaning to you. Mm. So um, that the actual religion, you know, not me- has meaning to you, not only the social part part and the cultural part of it, and all of that, and and to a lot of people, it's that that becomes very important, and I'm not in any way minimizing that mm-hmm. if there there's a lot to it to, to a person's li- life and uh, religion is designed to give that as well mm-hmm. uh, and you know at least according to most and that but um you can't experience a person cannot experience anything on a personal level if it's not some it does not if it doesn't have any personal meaning to you mm. so you could experience religion in a very collective way so mm. I'll give you an example right so uh you walk on the street uh you're not experiencing a walk you think about other many other things you're walking right but it's just what you do you drive a car right uh, it doesn't mean you're experiencing it you can you can even eat and not experiencing the food. You mm. don't even know what you're eating. You're just eating. Experience is when you have it has meaning. You appreciate it. Then there's the emotional part. You actually mm. that's which is the spirituality of religion, which is mm. another aspect of religion. That that's really about right. spirituality, about feeling it. And, right. And, so when we talk about religion, there's different sides to being religious or practicing religion or thinking of the history of religion. There's the communal side. And then there is like communal, social, um, um, and then it starts leading into ideals, like beliefs. Yeah. And then there's the experience, which is the thoughts and the value I give it. Right. And then there's the ideals, and the ideals is also the, the then there's the laws, especially in Judaism, the halachas, which is really 
here for yourself, but it's also here for the cloud, right? It's also here to keep the world better and to keep the mm -hmm. Jewish nation. So there's also a collective, you know, mm -hmm. like Kali Yisrael, a collective Le value kind of thing, right? And that Kali Yisrael, and Le 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 that comes in. So it's not only about you; it's about mm -hmm. it's about the nation, right? So there's more than uh, one part. Um, so, but ultimately. Um, if, like I said, if, if a person wants to take out of the most out of it, and he has to ultimately experience it, right? Mm. Um, so, just an interesting story, actually, which I got into trouble for. Um, so, in by who? <laughs> <laughs> one of the parties, like, was a little bit of a, um, uh, you know, he has had some some issues, so he was like upset for me saying, taking a stance at all. But, you know, in the time of COVID, right? So there were all these issues. Everyone's home and everyone was fine. Yes, yes, shul open, not shul open. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, all of that. And um, so one of the places that I wasn't was in the chat, pretty, I was you know, not very active, just, and so the whole argument became, so one side was right, more of a chassidish part, like, and, uh, and they were like very, for opening the shul and all of that. And then the other side was like, oh no. And they, but the other side kind of like hit back with, you know, you guys are, um, you all you want is come to shul to schmooze, to socialize mm -hmm. and all of that. It's just getting, you know, heated. So I just, this is on a, on a group, on check on a group chat. chat. So I put in my two cents there and I said, you know, that it's interesting that if you, you look back, um, the time that, and this is a little bit to your question, earlier as well, the time that religion became a very structured religion, very structured uh, community life, structured, uh, um, you know, on a daily basis was when Ezra, Seifer, and Nehemiah uh, came back in the sec in this, um, after Gulas Bovel, and they kind of like um, started uh, rebuilding Yerushalayim. Uh, the second best of Mikdash, that's when the whole history in Achene really started building a st st structure. And that's when a structure Jewish, Jewish life. Yeah, even like this is Jewish people and this is where we live and this yeah. is what we do and this is what we practice and we go to buy some Mikdash and we bring and, sacrifices. It was a whole. But it, and they even structured Tfilah, right? There was no structured mm, right. um, Tfila. So what was before? It, before was. Um, just, just uh, you were diving to Hashem very much like the rest of it today, you know, uh, but not necessarily like whenever, meditation kind yeah, of. It was like whenever you wanted. So, so it's actually a mech, in the in Rambam and Ramban about it. If it was just whenever you needed something, you asked for Hashem for it, or it you did have to, um, or you did have to daven, but there was no structure. So who uh, have to? If there's no structure, how did someone have to daven? Like I'm getting technical about it, right. so I can, and I guess people watching this can formulate an, Im Im an image, like an episode in their head of what did it look like. So today there's the structure, so I can tell my kids do this, and my teachings can be, okay, do so-and-so in the morning, Davin, you know. So if there isn't that, how does one, like, structure tefillah, like prayer or connection or any of it? Right, so if someone needs something, so your child tells you, you know, I'm worried about... Okay, this isn't today's. I'm worried about my test tonight, today in school, right? Mm. So you would say, okay, I mean, do your homework first, but also ask Hashem for for his help right. and all of that. So whenever it's it's really more of a loose but spontaneous type mm. of so it was of a tefillah. gesture and a, and a conversation, right? In a way, mm. it was even. In a way, I'm, I sometimes think about it. It's, it was extremely authentic, right? Right. So, it's really minapshit. It's really, yes. really simple. It's well, you know, it's the, probably the closest analogy is what people do with Tehillim today. Mm. That's probably the closest analogy, right? Mm. There's no structure when you have to say. Tehillim. And wh what do you say and how much? It's, it's just like you take out the tail. Exactly. And say, it's whenever you feel uh, it, right? So, so that's Ezra Cipher's times. It's just by some English. Change, second uh, by some English. Yeah, and they both before so they the second by some English. That's when they made, yeah. So and what started. prompted them to start like doing this? Who were they? How many people were there that they knew? Like, so right, so they they were given permission to build the Mishnah right? by by who by, by no, no from they were in Bovel, uh -huh. um, uh, by Kodesh, the, the, the you know the king who was was like an empire then. Mm. Or, 
and Ezra and Ezra and Nehemiah had a tremendous partnership, which is a beautiful partnership in general to see, because Ezra was Ezra Soif, and he was very he was the Rochnis person, you know, the uh, person in charge of and um, and Nehemiah was a builder. Nehemiah was mm. a real leader, and together. So what happened was, like everything else in the beginning, they couldn't get uh, they can get very few people uh, or very few established or uh, definitely not the elite. But def, um, to come back to Israel into Yerushalayim, so what they did is they, they kind of like collected, you know, the, the poor, the people wow. who the people who, who married outside of the religion, people wow. who like, they had to deal with all of these issues, and people basically had, they went recruiting people to come back to Israel, and they did yeah. not get the elite. No, and same. I mean, That's so not, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, that strikes some thoughts about life today and how. You know, but it's always like that. Work. You know, anytime you want to uproot people, you want to change the people who are very well established, and they don't like change, right? So you have to go and take from the fringes of of, of society. Um, I mean, it's he, you know, Lahavdel um, or Peter Herzl learned that the hard way. You know, in the beginning, he started. He went to the rich people. And went, in the end, none of those people mm. wanted. So you. Same thing happened. Mm. Uh, it's every movement like that. Anytime you want to do change, it's oh, it's never going to come from from people who have it good. You know, right. people have it good. Don't yeah, worry. I once dug in, like you know, read, researched, watched whatever I could about the nature of personality that terrorists um, um, are. Like people who are like out right minded. I'm going to go kill people with with a with a mission. And, and a lot of, I've heard both, but a, a, a certain amount of specifically jihadist recruitment is from people that are, have a certain need and this is going to fill it. Yeah, it's, and, it's, that's how life is, right? People do when, when, it, when it gives them something and mm, there's a reason for that. Right. You know, there's the, uh, when I grew up, this, uh, just, it used to be in the Haguda in Yiddish, you know, probably know the story. But it's uh, I I never understood why they put it in there. What's the real moral of the story? But it was in there. The story goes. I don't know. I, I think the story was Rav Nachum Chernobyl. That he said that he was staying at a very pushed to eat house, and he was like, um, so it was Zodrus for Mashiach or something. And he asked him, "Are you asking to come up to Israel?" So he said, "I have to ask my wife." <laughs> As the wife, the wife said not. Then he said. But here you have the, the Cossacks and you have all of that and all of the Tzudas. He came back saying that the wife said, why don't you take all the Cossacks and take them back <laughs> up and, and leave us here? Right. You know? So there's something to comfort that when, when we're talking about mass change, that it's not going to start necessarily from a high up, which is which is a very important and Never valuable does. thing right. to understand. Yeah. That if people are seeking and if I'm seeking, that I can't expect for established um, structures to want to follow that, yeah, not in, in the, and that's true in everything. That's true in um, in change of actually of uh, of real change, physical change, but it's also in religion, culture, and mm. art, and you know, entertainment. It, the, the always it's always the the uh, the change comes from the fringes, mm. and uh, and then as it moves in, you know, like. Even neighborhoods, right? Right. So funny, way, like, so how does a neighborhood start? If you talk about, you know, taking the city, Soho, Tribeca, and then go to Brooklyn, Williamsburg. So it always starts with the artists, right? The starving artists who, who can live in a building, a factory building, because he has the, he's allowed to have a commercial lease, so he's allowed to, like, commercial mm -hmm. living, and doesn't need much. And once... They have a lot of artists, and that artist becomes famous. Now it becomes a thing that people start now moving it has, in. Now, it's a, now it became the, the established. Uh, exactly. It right. It has the status that, that it gives the trust or the, for the rest to lean in. Right. So you have, we have Ezra Seifer and recruiting people to go back to, uh, yeah. to Yerushalayim and right. rebuild. Right. Uh, How many people did he find? find yeah, no, it says enough. Know? Yeah, it says enough. Like, um, right. I mean, we're talking about... Um, Thousands? thousands, thousands of people. How yeah. did he reach thousands with no social media? Or right, he so literally first of all, went from most village were to village in Gulis and Bovel, and a lot, a lot of people were still stayed in Israel. You know, like mm. because not everyone went to Gulis. Mm. So, but it's not hundreds of thousands. It's not like insane uh, masses. 
it's in the beginning how it really started in the beginning i'm not sure what happens yeah. I, if, if it says that i don't right. know so he recruits people he goes back to yerushalayim and he starts an organized structure around being faithful and jewish and religious yeah oh yeah so he starts it about in and he also comes makes a big as masakin to do kriyas a toyda mm. you know uh, so the toyda is red red do minion all of that all of that is 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 how old is he when he does this do you know um which I'm, i'm not sure what it should say maybe like mm. i'm not sure uh yeah but uh yeah getting back to the story so which and so what happened on the chat so i was like uh saying that that we're talking about minion here which started as a cipher and all of that um you have to remember that there was there were two uh goals here there was one it was tefillah but tzibur and all of that but there was also a communal factor because mm-hmm. the communal factor is what keeps everything going and it keeps the structure because So I said, you know, davening is one part. The also have to remember, it's but coming together is a real part of 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 the whole concept. Right. So not to machzavek. It's not a not a. Yeah. Know. So when someone says, "Oh, all you want to do is come together," it's like, yeah, that's why it was established. Part, part of, of it. it. Part of it was because mm-hmm. of that. Right. And today it's like, yeah, it's not, is it valued? Is it a thing? Is it taught? Like come to. Like uh, follow religion, so it's um so we're connected. I think so today c- the connection part is maybe even stronger than the religious mm-hmm. part. You know, everyone in a could be in a religious way too. But today, the tzibur, the, the structure of the tzibur is is stronger than ever was mm-hmm. because it it's all it's all concentrated in cities and countries. Everyone is connected, and mm-hmm. um, which throughout history was not that way you know there were so many people who were not connected and they were in you know, little towns little right little, um or farm so what villages. gave them the connection or the faith or the just because they were born jewish right but uh, interesting that um a big part of what chazal um stood for was mounted by shiny when there were different sects was about all to bring all the simple people all the people that um so what happened was right so there so there was the besamigdish was the center of jewish life the center mm. of, of yiddish line the center of israel right that's what and after a while it became uh very power driven and politicized and money and and um So that's when the, a lot of tzedakim took over the 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 kehina and the kahanu gedolim. Where a lot of them were were so were associated with Hellenism and tzedakim, and they started charging a lot of money, and so it was, became a very elitist society there. Mm. Um, Because people were like going there, yeah, so you could go it there. Developed into oh, you have the need, I have to supply, so exactly. it became systemized. It became a, a power, right. yeah, and uh, like who is bigger, who is stronger, how much we charge, what it costs, who's allowed. That. Wow! So one and of that's the, written in, in in where, like, where is this documented? So so, uh, so you can see in the in the Gemara a lot of a lot of it. Uh, so what Chazal did, they went out. So they always, if you see that from from Rabbiya, like all of the and many others because I'm always into going out people always visiting like this little shtetl you know, mm. to, to be my car of every year it's not a, mm. you know it's like um um it's almost like when I picture it I'm not sure it's like well about Shem Tov like we know the stories about yeah, Shem Tov yeah. but really they went out to air always that's what I when you yeah. started describing this I'm like that sounds very about Shem Tov so it's almost like yeah yeah Um, so that's always been a, so there has been a recruitment w- with 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 time like it's just different people did the recruiting right. on their own words in their own leadership and right. their own I guess purpose right and but there has been like so so by shiny comes when as so if it goes and recruits people yes and then so things sorry. evolve into more formed and 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 yeah organized and and corrupt and, and, the, and come the next take, person yeah. come and says okay I'm gonna recruit people for something that One more MS right. or more inclusive so there is that in- inclusiveness throughout history right. that keeps happening over and over and teaching every child that teaching every child of a toy it was was is 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 a core value 
in mm. in in Yiddishkeit and Chazal like so the Tkunis Yeshia Ben Gamla right that you have that every the fact that every father is just has is is obligated to to provide and to bring his child into to, to learning. Um, so the Gemara says, I mean, he was, Yeshiv Ben Gamla is not, um, I think, according to it, really was not a part of of the Pritisham Chazal network, it was more mm. associated with the Kehina, but this thing, he was, and Chazal worked with him or whoever, and wow. they could, so, so there was two different groups, the, the Chazal. Yeah. A lot of it is in Yusuf, then, and you, see, you oh, can wow. see all of that. So oh, wow. And then there's the Kehina. So yes, like, so the Kehina, yeah, the Kehina, so, so there's basically a few, first of all, the power structure was between three, between the Kehina and the Malchus, the Melech, and the Chazal were more... A Jewish Melech? Yeah, sure. Oh, so wow. in the Baish Shani, there were not a lot of Jewish Melech and Mamish, and some had mixed blood, I mean, the Hashmanum were the, were the stretch of, of, of Jewish Melech, a lot of them were like, um, put in by Rome, you know, like... Wow. Um, Jews didn't have their own kingdom, or they, they were a satellite state mm. under Rome, and then in right. Syria, different. So, so in order for them to start this new, let's say, movement, and they had to first go ask from the king permission for that to happen. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So the Hashmanu were there with the, that kifa. They they went out because of the um, became too Hellenistic and all of that, and they fought. That was the one kifa that, and wow. then from the Hashmanu came, you know. Also, it came back full circle with hardness and all of that. The game went back to Rome and all right. of that. So, but there was just that Kifa. Right. So then we have Chazal, who yeah. are who are recruiting yeah, and very much for the poor. And and so it's again that's happening. Yes, that's sort of happening again. And that's how many years later? Um, that's um, mostly we know about the last. I mean, we know most about the first of all because the Gemara talks about most of it about like it's that's the. So the last um, century, mm. so like four centuries, right? Four right. years. And uh, we know a lot also because Yusufin wrote about that time. Mm -hmm. so, so that's written and that we know. Yeah. Yeah. So Chazal, were, uh, but, and also talking about experience, right? So before that, all of the experience was in the Besam English. Mm. Uh, a very, you know, the through experience, through practice, through ritual, through, right? Through mm. ritual, and it was also it was more than ritual because that's why we had the singing of the levium. Mm. It it was a spiritual, Experi experience. A spiritual, experiential, yeah, and very um, ceremonial, ceremonial. Yeah. That's right, we're yeah. right. Chazal took it a lot to the best medrash. Mm. You know, your person learning, davening, your very own personal, uh, right? So they took it from that stage so to say that it's to not only very that. personal yes and Th this tension between the Vesemigdash and the coin Gudel and 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 what Chazal started building up is actually very articulated and uh, very well articulated in the story about Matsyam Matsyam Kudish Matsyam Kippe when the coin Gudel came out of the of the Vesemigdash and everyone you know besides them in a in a Kodesh and everyone was singing and uh, and all of a sudden Shmaya Vaftalian arrived and everyone mm. kind of like ran to mm. uh, so Italian. It's very clear that there was two sort of things happening. And the Kohen Gudel got upset. The Gemara said this whole story that so it was like there's a clear tension, a clear mm. tension. Okay, so in, in while this is happening in, in Yiddishkeit, where are other religions? Is there are there other religions besides kingdoms? We know about kingdoms. Like I think it, I mean we, I mean I know about kingdoms, okay. not specifically, but it's known. Where are other religions at that time? All the way to Buddhism. Like where where is Christianity? Where is Buddhism? Where is which practices are out there while the Jews have their practice? Right. So even while um, this is all going on, the second Mr. Migdish, there's another group which is called the Isium or the Essenes in English, right? We know a lot about them now today from the Dead Sea Scrolls. Uh, from the Qumran, um, the, from the desert next to um, Dead Sea, uh, which is not clear if they were really a part of the Essenes or they were just a certain offshoot or just dif just different um, um, perspectives on it. But there was a sect which was very esoteric and um, very um, um, they were living a life of of nazirs of um and what does that mean? Uh, meaning to say what they did was they 
they were all about, they, first of all, a lot of them went to the Midbar or in, in secluded areas. A lot of them did not marry. They were not married. They were very much um, um, into meditation, tahada, seclusion, seclusion like and disconnecting Esther, from the noise. Disconnecting from the world, uh. disconnecting from materials, and disconnecting from anything. And that's next to, where is that? that like, so, next to Israel. Like in, in, Israel? In, 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 in it's Israel. And there are Jewish people that yes, do that? Yes, yes. And, and Jewish people. That, ah. It's either, there's even some who say, which according to now, but that one of one of the parts, so when the Mishnah uh, mentions the Nisim, right? So there was, before Hillel and Shammai shared the Nisim, it was Hillel and Menachem. Mm-hmm. And Menachem, the Gemara says, was, went out to Tar Bisru. Now there's a very well-known Menachem from the Isim, which was close to the Melech. Some say it's the same person. Mm-hmm. But so he sort of moved out of town and yeah, went and joined the yeah the, they're, the they're tribes very, yeah very very almost like monastery type mm. of, um, of of life and um, that Chazal were not happy with that and mm. they were two different sects completely um, now how that happened or how they became like that some so because the Gemara does talk about in in very bright light and in awe about Chassidim and Rishonim. Chassidim and Rishonim were very into meditation. They were very into Izbaninus and all of that, into inner avoidance. Some say that that kind of like, as it went in generation, it became a very different than one, what mm. Chassidim and Rishonim were and it turned into this. But they were they were a sect, not as big as a sect of the of, the, of Chazal, but they were very big, very different type of life. Um, Christianity was not was only later. Uh, a lot of um, a lot of scholars believe that, and and um, especially from Dead Sea Scrolls, the Christianity kind the, even though it ha- without getting into the how a full story how it evolved and had its own stories and its own how it evolved, but in general the perspective on life and in religion was influ- at least influenced by the Asim, the Isim, mm. as some pronounce it. Um, so that was a total different sect. They, they, their type of life, which much closer to, to Buddhism. Mm. Okay, So, so Buddh- you, th- you think that that's where Buddhism comes from? Isn't no, Buddhism, Buddhism was older? before that. Buddh- yeah, Buddhism oh. is all the so, But those people were influ- influenced by Judaism, not by Buddhism. Right, so they some, live near Jews. There are some theories. Some people say that there, 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 there was some connection between the East and Islam, you know. But most say they, 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 it's, it's hard to find really a connection. It mm. just could be the same time. So the Eastern and and so so we have the the whole Buddhism um, Eastern that's going on while Yiddishkeit has its own journey, and they just have their own practices, unrelated. No one knows of the other. Yeah, is that yeah, how it is? Yeah, I mean, at uh-huh. least what we know today, um, and Buddha, so, so basically, before Judaism and even while Judaism was going, Yiddishkeit was going on, the other religions was all was paganism. You know, mm. it was always the Zudis believing in all in idols, many many idols, yes. believing in things, so that's going to happen. And in many gods in Poland, right. um, in the East, the same thing it was like you know, the, which yeah. is still today. The still Hindu, today. Yeah. To a certain extent, Hinduism, yeah. all that, and Buddhism was the yeah, first. Yeah, like literally, I think I think they, when I was there, they explained that there's over a million gods to count. Like they can actually <laughs> document over a million gods. Yeah. Which yeah. is interesting to me. Yeah, I was in <laughs> India and uh, I was, you know, I was amazed because one of the people that we visited there for business, like just wanted me to come um, like, either for some, I don't know what they call it, for the middle of the day or something. And he said, oh, you'll be so impressed. It was like, he couldn't wait for me to come. And, like, and I was like, it was very interesting. Um, but uh, so at the same time in the East, you know, Buddhism had its own. So uh, is there is there a connection yeah. between um, the deeper, I guess the more inclusive sides of Yiddishkeit to, the, to Buddhism? Like uh, historically, let's just... Right, know. so... Buddhism, let's, it's it's Buddhism on its own. It's not a religion, right? Um, the Buddha never wanted to discuss, never discussed God, the whole concept. Not to say that it doesn't have a belief system, right? It has a belief system, which, of course, what happened today in the whole wellness world that 
the people came and they got rid of the whole belief system. You don't talk about the whole belief system, the rebirth and all of that. Yeah. And you just take out the wellness part. Right. Um, the acceptance part yes. and the wellness part. So, But their belief system is not um, a belief that it's avoid the zoo. It's a belief system how the world works. It's very mm. much with incarnation. And, and mindsets. Right. And, uh, and, and de detaching from, from, from the pain body and so on. That's technique. That's, that's already technique. that's lifestyle. What it, what it's rooted in is that um, that nothing dies and nothing is and nothing is individual. Meaning it's, there's a collective consciousness, mm. and when one dies, it goes in that's to something else, and you and, and the you or whatever part of consciousness of you can become a plant tomorrow. Right. And that's how it all connected right. and, whole, and karma. All of that people say, right. but. It, then realize it's how it's rooted into a whole belief system of mm -hmm. how the world works. Right. Uh, and um, so they have their own beliefs. And then there are practices, which is to disconnect and to meditate yeah. and so on. So that doesn't connect in history with Yiddishkeit. Like we have, the, they're, they're so far on the actual globe that there is actually no connection between the two. Um, look, Yiddishkeit always, um, our wellness, right, was always through spirituality. Mm. So... Um, I mean, of course, we have if they care of ourselves, and it's all. But in, in, what, what the Yiddish guy brought to the world was your well-being of life by ex being spiritual and connected to Hashem. That's your well-being. So that's where. So that's where you become a better person. So. So many say that that's like a, a cop out. Which means it's an easy way to just like put everything, you know, to put things on on Hashem. So you know, whatever is bashet is going to happen. Like that, I I don't personally, I don't find that that's what it meant. That's know? if you want to just use it as. So there was a um, there was a um, very influential professor in Israel always like said that. So there's the people who have God serving them. Yes. And then there's people <laughs> serving God, right? So that's the part when people want God serving them. But if someone wants to, in life, you know, which is very well described in Rambam, let's say how you should be meditate before davening, think about godless abode, godless of the world, and godless Hashem, and how small you are, and that's such a small part. And you get to a certain point of humbleness and all, and mm. all of that, which kind of like, makes you a better person so that's the practice of well-being yeah and gives you the tools to 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 be you know a happy person yeah but that's so it's not i would say it's not that different the, the actual practice but it's the it's the subject of the practice you know mm. um it has a shem there and it has a bittle to a shem so while buddhism is very much into the is no self mm. at all so that's how they get rid of all your um you know, your, all of your... Um, Id. Yeah, or your urges or anything like that, or your bad midas and all that. Um, and the reason they say that you can get rid of yourself because there is no self. Remember, right. there's nothing individual about you. There's right. nothing, right? Um, so, but Yiddishkeit says that's because it's Bittl Klap Hashem. What does that mean? You know that the conversation of Bittl is um, either very helpful for certain people or extremely triggering for certain people, because bittel can mean you are not, I am not, and it can also mean something else, which I think you're talking about the something else. What does bittel mean? Yeah, so like to be misbattle klap Hashem, like where is Hashem sitting? Like, like is it misbattle for some king? Is it means I don't matter and I'm giving myself to some imaginary higher yeah. higher power? Like, is yeah. that what it is, or is bittel something else? So. Yeah, no, I, it's a fascinating question uh, to to talk about it. I just want to say, just go back a second. Say when 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 someone says bittel for Hashem, right? What it comes down to is, what is Hashem, and what are you? First, mm. let's talk about the two parties, right? So, if you take a very simplistic, uh, Hashem is an entity, right? Like, like almost like a person in your mind. This person, and then there's me, and I'm just bittel for him. Of course, I mean you're right. Like, why? So am I nothing? Everything, everything for him. We know Yiddishkeit is very into individuality, the opposite and self, opposite of Buddhism. Like Bishvili mm. Nivra Um There's a fascinating mission actually. I love to, you know I love to see things in, in in which was actually 
halachically practiced, not only in Galata. So the Mishnah says, uh, which is fascinating, um, I actually just wrote a song on it, so which maybe one day I'll, I'll do something with it. I find, uh, the Mishnah says, so when somebody came t- to say Aidis, right, to be a witness on, on Dina Nefushis, which is very serious, right? And talking about you can be capital punishment, it's really. So Bezin, Bezdin, right, uh, had to kind of like explain to the person the seriousness of the situation. Right? So there's many, there's a few different things that they were um, talking and saying. So the Mishnah says that one of the things they were saying, why, so they're saying the person, why is a person born alone? Yechidi. Every person mm. is born on its, its own as a separate entity. So the, says a few, so the Mishnah says to tell him a few things. And they also then to tell him that that every person is different. Mm-hmm. And the one person is not doing it to the other. And that's why ev- that's why every person can say Bishvil and never oil him. That's what the Mishnah says. Mm. So, the, Gemara, so the, the Mishnah says that the reason explains itself so Bishvil and never oil him because every person is unique and every person himself is worth everything. So picture it when you want to tell a person like how serious this is. So a Buddhist would tell the op- person would, would tell just the opposite. You know, we're all one. There's no other person than you. You are really killing yourself here, and you're killing the whole. And in the Chazal, in the Mishnah, it was the opposite. That person is an is a full entity in itself. Mm-hmm. So, so I'm just going. That's just yeah. a part of of of, uh, of of the yeah. That's a part of the part of Bittel is that I am. So I want to get back to Bittel. I'm just yeah. saying, but it's definitely not that you're nothing, right? Right. But. Right, so to establish Bittel, we first need to know how individual and unique, yes, you and are. we're so individual and unique that every person can have that. Because Ex- exactly. there isn't one thing, there is always that one thing or that specific characteristic that every person brings uniquely to his life. Which that, is, yeah. yeah, you're not out of a fact, you know. You're not which is why a, one thing is sure, that Bittel does not mean I mean nothing, because it goes exactly. the opposite of the... Right. The you theory. know, I think there's a saying from Rabbinim, just something that there's two pockets. One, you should have a shvila and one you should have an oichi of a that's the balance, but no, may- I, I think I think of it that in Shvili Nevero Oilam is one mindset, and Udam Rima Vasalayo is the practice. Yeah, <laughs> it's the yeah, it's the other part. It's right? like it's like yeah, if I keep in my mind that I'm a something, the practice might be very valuable but, that I'm a nothing. Yes, it's like it's almost like Kalabera Eichmiya Covid. Right, it's like that's the practice. And if you don't have, if you don't need it to prove it, and you don't have, yeah, you know, exactly. That's that's the core that's of confidence, like probably. Yeah. I think I think that the the other side of it is the right. good. So, but getting back, yeah. So uh, getting back. So this is if you think about Hashem in a very human terms, very mm. simplistic terms, right? But once a person starts seeing Hashem in a much way, the way Gitzchak really is supposed to be, and the way Aramina is, Hashem is not a person. Mm. You, Hashem is not an entity. Even Hashem is. We can't. You can't apply any of human emotions or any of human motivations to Hashem. So when you've been misbattle to Hashem, you can't think about it as misbattle to a person, to to someone with with, with a power dynamics. You mm. know that all of these are human concepts. Mm. So really, what you misbattle is to the to the highest form of truth that you can think of. Mm, that totally. that's the only right. not so, yeah. that and, and more than you can think of. Right. You know? So, so metaphorically, it's higher, upper, outer. So then it becomes a very human bittle of giving myself away. And what you're suggesting is to look at it more like the the, the biggest knowledge or the highest form of knowledge that highest I don't even form know. Knowledge, the highest truth, or right. which is also words, you know, which we yeah, say yeah. it in human in the way our yeah, mind yeah. works. But that's the most we can do. Right. But and that time, bittle is like you're misbatting yourself to the high. It's like whole, the whole dynamic of. But is 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 an uplifting mm. uh, uh, type of, of mm. it. You That's know? the purpose of it. Yeah. It's a practice and a purpose of uplift humans in order to be more, exactly. and do more, and show yeah. up more because I am is battle. So that, that's right. the tool. What what you said was that's the the Jewish or like the 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 Jewish version of of well being. Of so well being. I want to do well, right. and then there's obstacles. Yes. So the way I practice 
getting through my obstacles is through a certain sense of of bittel, which the word today is probably surrender, <laughs> which you, is a word used a lot. It's surrender, but it's also you becoming a part of it, mm. right? So you must battle to that. Oh, wow. It's so not that's only... That's a very strong distinction. Right. There's surrender, and then there's bittel, which means I'm enrolling in something bigger. Yeah, it's wow. like bittel b'shishim, right? Which we know, which is... So what does bittel b'shishim mean? That it becomes... Up, so of course there's this whole alam uh, di if 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 it actually becomes part of the of the of the kosher or if it's just not you can't but well, whatever the case is that's the illusion of bittel that it it becomes a part of the get mm. with the bigger picture. So bittel isn't I am not it's I am part of I'm enrolling yeah. in something else. That part is it, that way it's very similar to 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 the Buddhistic and the, the wellness which in general you're part of the bigger mm. picture. But again, I have to remember here it's about about the unique. truth, about the ultimate. It's it's mm. um, now that's a very religious theological way of living. You can't that's and you can't separate in Yiddishkeit's wellness. You can't separate it from Hashem. Mm. That's what it is, right? That well, what the modern world was able to do with Buddhism is separate the wellness. From any belief system, like it has no, you know, just the techniques, and that's why you know that became so popular, because the world is not a religious world today. I mean, at least that um, Western, the Western world. world. Um, that's that story. Right. So that's happening. So we're going back a little bit. So we're going back a little bit historically. So while Yiddishkeit is diverting from only the Kehena to Chazal. And to these different groups that sort of go out, and then there is the the Eastern world, which is not, which is their own, their own, their right. own, their own, like create like Rob teachers and philosophers and people also doing there what they think is best, creating their own structures, and then okay, so and Yiddishkeit continues and through by shining, and um, right. can we let's fast forward a little bit? Okay, right, so what's the next bit? Point. Chaza, but. It was always Sanhedrin was always a big part of the um was the 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 Toyedige and the Luchen and part of whole by shiny of of leadership. But the Sanhedrin, as a consequence, is no, that why it no, was that there? was that's why it was set up. So the Anshikne Sagdolo set up the whole as a consequence Sanhedrin. for not following the rules or no, that was a... the leadership was there was so leadership was between Melech, which was Malchus was what, um and it was the Kehina, and it was the Sanhedrin. Some even say that the Puritans, when they came to America, they set up the whole system of three branches of government based on that. Because mm. the Puritans were very into the, you know, the Bible, the Old Testament. So some even say that it's rooted in that in that system. Oh, wow. But but after a while, even the Sanhedrin got very infiltrated with by with uh, personal interests and the Kehina stuff like that. Right. So back. that is part of the of the Kehina side of yes. of Jewish yes, um, after a while tradition and standards. Yeah. For me, it really paints a picture to understand how a lot of the things that um, practices that we have and what we do, like where it originated, what did it look like, what did it feel like for the people back then to practice this, what did it give them, and so much of it is still that way. Um, so let's fast forward like many, many years later. What's the next um, piece of like understanding that relates to us directly today? Like, like I'm Orthodox, I'm Jewish, and for the people that are watching this that are either Jewish or not, but like I'm curious, what um, as far as faith, the way we know it, what's the last connection we have to? What's the last um, sort of influence that is important. There's a few parts of Yiddishkeit, right? So there's the from Yid, who basically collect, connect, takes the whole picture. He takes everything, right? He takes in the whole, all the rules, all the the luchas, all orthodox. the orthodox, orthodox, right? The challenge for a person like that is not to get overwhelmed with everything and find his own niche and and, and make it personal, right? That's a challenge. Uh, it's a good challenge um, because. You know, like we said, you can just get lost just doing every day and just be, making it a system and a cultural thing that, rather than mm. personal. Right? So it does; it's lacking an experience if it's only systemized. Yeah, that's that's a challenge, right? right. Um, it's a good challenge, but it's a challenge. Um, and uh, I'll tell you so. So I had um, so I was just met with uh, um, a couple of young men 
and uh, the discussion came up, and I'm a young, they're like in the twenties, it's like I started talking about Yiddishkeit and other stuff, and 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 with many questions and stuff. I I, I stopped and I said to him, "What does Yiddishkeit mean to you?" Mm. He said to him, "Yiddishkeit is that." I said, "I'm not asking you about Yiddishkeit as a." concept let's leave that that's a, what does it mean to you personally and it was like you know i never thought about it mm. you know, a lot of people look at it as yiddishkeit then i have to fit into that but not how does that fit into me how right so the rambam has it's a very fascinating rambam uh in Pirkovis, where you know, we always say, mm-hmm. you know, that Hashem wanted to bring um, sch- and merits for, for the class. So it gave them a lot of toy, a lot of mitzvahs to do, right? So the Ramam says, what does it mean? Um, it says means that ultimately a mitzvah is only has only meaning. If it's if it's eternalized, if it has something with you, and it's and it's sometimes very hard for people, and very people are very different. So Hashem gave you such a, so the Torah gives you such a, a big diver, you know diversification mm-hmm. that somewhere you're gonna find yourself. Mm-hmm. That's the number says. Right. Now this number is very experiential. Weird. And yeah, the experiential side of right. of the value of of of. Of Yiddish guy. Right. So the Rambam itself is very rooted in this um, uh, philosophical thought of you know, a bit of Aristotelian that Aristotelian that uh, you know things only mean according to if it improves your mind and that's actually a sure thing. But besides taking away that whole intellectual discussion, you know, it's also it's 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 very practical for us and to try to find something. That, that, that is you, that means something. Right, so besides the part that intellectually makes sense to do that, right. uh, it, it also is, is practically a, a valuable way to do things, probably do anything. And internalize it, it's yeah. A, probably a valuable way to do, to do anything. Like I, like, like I can have a marriage that's, that serves the idea of marriage and my kids, and I can have a marriage that serves me, and that actually, I don't know if serves, but more like brings meaning and... And, and and values that are bringing me forward and building me. Um, yeah, so to do that with religion for me has been a very, very, very valuable thing to do. Um, it just feels sometimes that the religion, as the way we call it religion, doesn't agree with it. Like that's how it feels sometimes. It feels Maybe. like like the religion doesn't agree with it. Like there's no real room for me to make it mine because how is that going to... What if what I find doesn't align with a certain halacha or with a certain practice or with a certain ritual, you know, like, so there's an, there's almost like a problem with doing that. Like, it's a wonderful question. What does it mean to me? But it's a eh, dangerous road. Like that's, you know. Yeah. I mean, the, the, what I find and I'm not sure if I'm, I'm talking to exactly the point you're saying, uh, correct me if not, but there's, oh, you know, nothing is ever, a narrow, a set way. There's always r- wiggle room for, for to make things happen, and that you can a little give and a little take. You didn't always had the same toida from you. Always the same aluchas. The internal life, the spiritual experience, was not the same. The, for p- different people, for different people, That's in different so times, different sectors. So, um, and it's just a testament to to its broadness and and and. And if you want to say the core of it, to the core of it, the truth. Um, so the Rambam's experience as a rationalist and as a philosopher, and the Rizal's right, the Rizal's yeah, um, Kabbalistic, esoteric, um, mystical type of experience is not the same. Mm-hmm. Meaning, uh, meaning the same as, as a practice and as a tool, as a mindset. Yeah, different. it's different, very yeah. different. Take even the Rambam and his son, who were not were so alike, and uh, and even even in the ideas and in, in the thinking philosophy, but the Rambam is totally of is totally rational, philosophical, and his son has a, a lot of Sufism influences, mm. much more mystical. 
So it was very different in the uh, and in, in the p- practice side of things and the right. emotional side of things. So the point, so that's the, so the, the the safety net and the framework is halacha. In other words, halacha gives you the the actually the freedom hmm. of exploring and in in the uh, in the emotional life. So not to get too too philosophical here, uh, but one of the main uh, uh, criticisms that Immanuel Kant as was, if he was anti-Semitic or not, but it was uh, his, his criticism had a tremendous influence with uh, Jewish philosophy. People trying to answer it, but it's like that halucha is very um, um, almost like enslaves you. Takes away your choice, takes away your freedom, and it's very interesting that it's versus Christianity, right? But in a way, it's the why act. versus Christianity? Because Christianity has no laws and rules. At least Protestant, the Protestant part, it's all about your connection of your heart, right? And then mm-hmm. you make the decisions according. So his point was that while Judaism is like a very the yoke of Ju- of, uh, of 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 Judaism is. Okay, do like this, do this, do that. Yeah. And um, versus Christianity, the doing is what you do f- because what you feel inside, right? That's, mm-hmm. But and there's a lot to talk about that, a lot to talk about that. But the fact is that Halacha gave Jews and gives everyone the freedom of exploring emotionally, mentally, spiritually, while you'll always stay in the in the framework versus I don't want to get too much into Christian but it you know if 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 uh, when if it, there is no framework like that the framework becomes your emotional life and then you don't have freedom of, of so how valid is actually my emotional expira- exploration if it's bound by a very strict set of rules that literally dictates everything I do like how I think what I don't think, like, or is that not what it was meant to do? Like, I'm supposed to and allowed to think openly and freely? Yes, like, sure. Like, if I put that le'emas next to aloha or next to a um, structural belief system, like, where is the room? I hear that that gives a framework, but doesn't that completely take away the ability to explore? Specifically, uh, if we attach to it oinish, like like punishment? It definitely, it, it only limits you not to th- thinking when you want to go beyond thinking about look if you want to say okay I don't want um, um, what about doing without the framework right right but within the framework meaning to say as long you know with keeping aloha uh your thoughts and your fe- and your uh feelings is 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 there to explore mm. there is no there is no uh just um, um, uh um limitation of that and just the opposite that's when it becomes yours you know mm. that's when it becomes it, 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 if i'm dafka allowed to explore then i can actually take on the luchas as mine yes exactly and you can experience the luchas mm. right you can feel it what and you mm. and you don't have to connect to everything that's what i was saying and the gemura has um there's a whole gemura like in different generations that they actually start focusing to different Point to the Luminous says, and what but Sadiq Vamanusa, you can you know, the focus where you connect to emotionally cannot is not cannot be all over, it's the parts that talk to you. And mm. people are afraid, people are afraid of saying, of doing that, saying, you know, This really talks to me, this message, and and but that's that's not a a uh, that's the way it should be, right. So, so the, the individual within the collective is is what it's all about. Yeah, and to balance the two is almost like a paradox, which is that when I I once heard like as soon as something is opposite and it makes no sense, that's when I know God is there, like uh-huh. that's the sign almost. Um, so there is a, I th- I still find that there's a paradox in there, given the, the way of the heart, and the extent of what the heart can just go and explore. You're saying specifically the heart explore, right? Mm. So yeah, I mean, but if you do heart and mind, again, that's different. You know, I I, I guess there's different ways of of ex, of exploring. So and questioning. Yeah. So if I if I yeah. 
Um, the, the other thing that I had in mind to ask you about and hear your take on is like, where is there room for any kind of change in any kind of religious system or religious practice? And how much of it is meant to be fixed and how much is meant to be changed? Like growing up, nothing of it is meant to be altered the slightest. What I wear, what I eat, what I drink, like even like with fi which fish we ate Friday night when I was younger was exactly the same. And it would not be salmon, it would be whitefish. <laughs> so yeah. there is this very extreme emphasis in certain parts of any religion, I think, that it should not be altered. Otherwise, we're going to lose the good of it. And then we're having a conversation about exploring and about like uh, accepting and not even accepting, but to, to, to enroll in something greater, which means creating. And as soon as I think of creating, um, like there is a part of change that seems to be inevitable and they sort of don't fit to me. Right. And my question is, you know, what do you think of that? So uh, um, there's two points and uh, which, um, and then and from two angles here. Uh, one is, you know, on a sociological and historical perspective, what is going on? What's that? Because definitely doesn't say in the title about eating whitefish, right? So we'll talk. That's one, one, one. Uh... Maybe it does say somewhere. We just didn't. Uh, we didn't do the gematria yeah. yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's one part, and then there's the individual part, right? I find even today, when you do change, you do it loud, and you do it, you know, like just you, you, you rattle, you try to rattle the system, right? Uh, but personally, for a person. Um, what they choose, I think, um, and a person who doesn't have so much, is not afraid and wants to do the right, doing it for the right reason, you know, a lot of people do, you know, like um, switch around things and change things in a very quiet way just because they mean well, whatever works for them. Like, and in, in, in when you say they change in a quiet and individual way, what does that mean? It's to say... Like they'll change which fish they eat or they'll change their... Yeah, okay, so that's a very practical thing but yeah. what it means a lot of i'm going back to what it means to them right so there are a lot of people where you know shabbos is not the same doesn't mean the same to what it means to, to the parents mm -hmm. it doesn't mean you know uh, 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 um, raising chinuch does not mean the same these things mm -hmm. have different dynamics to these a lot concepts, of people these concepts terms, change. yes there's definitely that's what you mean by small yeah mm. yeah and you know, i don't mean come at, but i'm saying in, in, in experiencing it, in the way you experience it, I find, and I meet a lot of people, and a lot of people are kind of like, who are serious about it, they basically, if you think, the, the, the inside of it, and the, the meaning, the internal meaning, is very different for them than for their parents, and very different for the children, and when they mm. respect. So that's on the internal part. But we also have to remember, it, and put it in this historical perspective, you know, we sometimes think time, oh, 100 years, that's 150 years, that's so long ago, but it's such a, that, you know, it's really in certain um, areas, especially how societies develop, and it, it's, very, it's very short. And specifically we, throughout history. Right. You know, Our right. Yiddish guide is still very much influenced and is still a product of what it went through, a trauma. So I actually went through a trauma which was called enlightenment and and um, reform, mm. right? Which was, and that start. So what happened was the reaction to that was so when was no that? change. So you're starting to you know the 1800s, right? Early 1800s. Where it started. So. Uh, it started with a emancipation when when the Jews started getting rights and um, and the whole Enlightenment movement. Um, Where was that? And so it started in, in the West, mainly in Germany, mm. um, England. You know that's mm. talking about, uh, you know through John Locke and 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 others. It started mainly the Enlightenment started in in England and went to Germany later, um, which. The, the the religion right not only the religion the whole structure uh, and 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 uh, culture went through a tremendous trauma mm. and the reaction and which was led by some in 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 that part of the world you know the austrian hungarian empire and then those is like anybody that kind of like started changing things 
Mm-hmm. It was like, oh, okay. So the don't change, evolve thing is a recent response to a very specific time and era in, in Judaism. The fear, where, mm, the, that the strong, fear of the change. The fear of so every little change. Mm, so being there's different thing. parts in changing. One is a fearful way of looking at it, and the other one is a value of I yeah. want to build or follow or create something in or my improve. life, which involves Yiddishkeit. Right. And then there is the other side is like I'm afraid if something changes. Yes. So that is a response to something. That's and so interesting. That might, you know, we don't know how long that's going to be, till it's, but but that's... So what, still, the way... Um, just like a person, when they have a trauma when they're five, it can last until they're Right, you know, I could respond to life from but a certain mindset. Collectively... That's part of Judaism is still traumatized and afraid and may and I'm not maybe rightfully so by what happened and by all the and so so that's where the, you know the phrase of Chudish mm. Usumanatoida came and uh what I personally feel between my friends in my generation in, in um that which I don't think I've maybe I'm wrong that it was in the earlier generation that at least it, internally people f- starting to be- feel more that um, making their own different perspectives within the frameworks Today. is something okay and actually mm-hmm. good, which I don't think it was, you know, two genera- a generation or two generations before. Uh, but, um, I mean, yeah. historically and in the deeper rooted values of, of, of Judaism is and rooted the part where I make in mine. Yes. And yeah. then they have yes. different leaders that have emphasized on that, like the Balshem Tov and, and, and earlier. Um, and in the Gemara, yeah. we see also the, the different emphasis on different... The, on, indivi- on the individual. Buchavakik, and mm-hmm. at the time, he said, let's focus only on one thing. Right. Are you talking, um, of course, th- that's an internal focus. Of course, he didn't mean... Um, to give up other, you know, right, right. Um, okay, so one tool of well being that I take out is how to make Yiddishkeit, um, a, a mi- for, even for a mindset, is that Yiddishkeit is a, is a practice of how to live with the most possibilities and the most opportunities and the best version of myself um, and in every aspect of my life. Um, to wrap up, I, th- I think that change or wanting change is entrepreneurship, change. Wanting more is a very, um, like the fact that I'm doing a podcast is part of this collective movement. It's available, the ability to like, you know, to buy stocks from an app and to like set up a studio with, um, you know, without having to work on it for months. Um, but with that said, there's a lot of new um, blocks and obstacles that that brings up. So like once upon a time, people would be born the son of the Duke, then that would, they would die doing being the son of the duke and one day becoming the duke and the same goes with kingdoms and the same goes with the vasash trege someone was born the person <laughs> that's that's his life story and we sort of re um we recreate ourselves in this lo- in this generations like more than once in one lifetime um which brings up a whole dynamic of of emotions and thoughts which maybe wasn't common to think of so um i think that's part of what well-being is about like how do i manage this kind of stress could be that's why there's so much anxiety because there's so much change and desire for change which might be really what the word gale is like to really go out of confinements and to keep creating myself and recreating myself so what are your thoughts about two things one is um the mindset of entrepreneurship and growth versus like what like nine to five is it enough to just like have my job and be with that like the second part of that is, what about the anxieties? What are your thoughts about the? Like, I have a friend that said, I haven't met the person that doesn't struggle with anxiety these days. If they admit it or not is a different thing. So on the first point, you were saying, first part about entrepreneurship versus, you know, the Duke and the 9 to 5. Um, it definitely brings a whole set of anxieties in entrepreneurship, but it definitely takes away another set. You know, the fear that we're almost forgetting today already what it means, the fear of l- lost my job. You know, mm. you know, today lost my job is only a problem to someone who had, who, if, you know, in a bad economy, doesn't have a college education. Today, we when, when someone just loses a job, you think, okay, so you got, you're going to get Cobra and going, mm. going, and, and is going to find a new job. You know, let's say it's a jobs report, right? Like, 
and and it's not bad now and that's part of what's keeping inflation up even though a lot of people are being fired because they're being rehired but in mm. general that fear of losing your job or what happens if the structure gets you know your your it and your routine gets disrupted some people can't deal with that fear mm. so that's a set of anxieties uh, to some at least to me is much stronger anxiety than thinking okay i can I can I have the freedom and I to have redevelop the, myself, the agility to and exactly uh -huh. and I think a lot of a big reason the people part that people are attracted besides all of the human for the, the forces that drive the human being to innovation and all of that which is a separate discussion there is a safety net there's a tremendous safety net saying there's nothing set that you can take away from me that mm. can stop right so just saying there's another side to it well um, that, that that other side is is probably a very a very relieving thought to change anxiety yeah change stress and fear to understand that the, the fact that there is so much instability gives so much freedom and opportunity yes absolutely mm. and like there's the, the fear of, of something happening out of the, you wake up in the morning not having any control of it and just it's not there anymore And now you lost. That's mm. that's a tremendous anxiety for some. So I think that so it's kind of like a balance. In general, why there's so much anxiety? And um, you know, I know Moshe Feinstein I think calls it in the Chivas like a new machla of America or something like that. But I think a lot of it has to do. I mean, just just again, not a professional opinion. Just like, when you're in survival mode, when you have to think what you're going to eat tonight. And we can all see it in our lives in different stages. You don't have time or room to process anxiety. You're just surviving. You're 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 in in a, in a mode of 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 which is your you know the most primitive part of the brain, which is like not very different than 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 a dog, right? You're just constantly running to survive, running, doing, eating, getting things done. There's no room for the feeling of like I'm stressed, right? So there's no room of your thought process intellection to really think think I'm stressed or even to feel it you know to bring it up so I think the fact cause we're not so much in survival mode all of a sudden we get we get this mm -hmm. we get so all it's the collective feelings. growth that results in in emotions to start coming up exactly the whole emotional word to start developing and becoming getting language and expression and fear and so on and the understanding or the knowing that things could be good and could be better hmm. so in a way when it used to be this is my life you know this is it. the surrendering as much because there's no not much to improve right to improve and you can feel and where do i want to go and what what is it all of a sudden there's a, there's all of these it starts flooding that's the, that's the flip side of of unlimited potential yeah for, for a part of me that just wants stability and 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 certainty right. Which is, mm. you know, fascinating discussion. I don't know when I'll take it there, but you know, as artificial intelligence is developing, right, and there's a very big possibility that human beings will have a lot more time and a lot less to do. We don't know, and if that's the case, the question becomes: Will it become a better, you know, more peaceful society, better, or is it going to be too much time? And now we have to deal with even more emotions, right? Know? So, well, it's, it's definitely happening that we are dealing with more emotions than ever yeah. because things are slowing down and becoming, at least in the Western world, more right. privileged, and that privilege allows us to start dealing with another set of human evolution, which is the emotional side of yeah. things. And it's happened really. Um, what what the main trigger of this was the industrial revolution. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden you are not working seven days a week and or six days if you're a yid and not working from the morning till night. You know, all of that things. All of a sudden people had much more time, working much less. Everything changed. So that that that's, a, that's a contributor. That's yeah. part of the influence of what drives this. Um, how do you envision this anxiety generation? Like, what's your hope for it? I, what's I, your vision for for us? Look, yeah. <laughs> basically, it's a developmental process. I'm talking mm. about very big for, for society as a general and for the human race, right? For us in our life, I think you know, anxiety is 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 not easy, but um, it's if you can overcome it or a little bit, and and those moments, if you can cherish those moments that you don't have, that's what we need to focus on. Yeah. Right? So if the anxiety comes from 
um, revolutionizing myself and making a better version of me or of the way the world is moving. Um, and I have, and I can also find the relief in between or like the, the good moments in between. There's value in it. There's value in the process. Yeah. There's value in, in, in there's definitely value. Um, uh, yeah. and, and, uh, yeah. And, and there's something interesting, which is in total discussion, even while you're experiencing anxiety, if you're really delving into it and, and you want to learn more about yourself, what are you really afraid of? Right. What's scary? That itself is very fascinating. And right. you can be, you yeah. know, you know, which right. wouldn't happen without the, 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 you know, trigger, without the cause. Yeah, exactly. That's one, one good way of looking at it. We're going to end with this today. I really want to do this again and yeah, more. Sure. I feel yeah. like we touched on little um, points of brilliance and I hope perspective. it wasn't too too much all over the no, place. I'm talking sorry. to your audience now, yeah. saying I know we it was very natural and just this went was very it was. For me, this was excellent. It's going to give me context to things. And I'm going to let this like understanding of like structures and, and the history of things to really like understand that there is so much room in it to like expand and grow within it um yes thank you so much Marci. thank you Martin. i appreciate thank it you.